Alex, I mean, a fully autonomous car, we know autonomy is hard. Uh, and there are other companies out there that do basically have a lead where this is concerned. And we still don't see it out in a meaningful way on the roads right now, not to mention the fact that the infrastructure is very intensive to make that happen, too. Uh, that 2024 timeline, that potential 2024 timeline is realistic for Apple. I don't think it is. Um, but, you know, I like the fact that they're setting this ambitious goal, but also saying uh, that this might change. And I think that's the right way to look at it. You know, if Phil came and reported that said Apple will definitively make a car in 2024, I would start to get worried. This technology is notoriously tricky. Google's been working on it for more than 10 years and hasn't really uh, released anything very monumental yet. So for Apple to think that this is going to happen in four years or three years is a little too ambitious. But the fact that they're saying we're going to set an ambitious target, it might move, but let's go ahead and start working with Kia and try if we try to see if we can make this happen. I think that's a positive sign. Yeah, Phil. I mean, I, I can see why Apple would p finally potentially be looking to get into um, the auto business in a, in a more meaningful way. I've seen numbers out there from some analysts of $10 trillion in, in terms of next generation yeah. mobility. But why Hyundai specifically? And I realize the deal is not final and sure. things could change, but why that specific automaker? Well, they've been talking for some time. Uh, and the key thing to keep in mind is that last October, the new chairman was put in place at Hyundai, a gentleman named E.S. Chung. E.S. Chung has said from the get-go, as soon as he took control of the company, mobility as a service is the future. Not that Hyundai will get out of making cars or that it wants to stop making cars, but it wants to advance the company towards mobility driving everything. If you believe that mobility is the future and you've already had some conversations with Apple and you know that autonomous is the key part of what Apple is looking for, well, then, if you're Hyundai, you sit there and you say, boy, who else is it better for us to be aligned with than Apple? We can, we can learn from this. Even though this would be an Apple car, it's not like Hyundai would get nothing out of this deal, that they would simply be a contract manufacturer. So for Hyundai, that's the appeal here. For Apple, look, Hyundai is one of the two or three best manufacturers of vehicles in the world. Look at their reliability scores, not only here in North America, but around the world. I mean, this is a company mm. that learned a long time ago from the Japanese, Toyota and Honda, and they've incorporated those lessons, and they are one of the leading manufacturers worldwide. So if you're Apple, you're making a wise decision if you decide to build this car at the Kia plant in Georgia. Let me start with Alex and then turn to you, Phil. Uh, you know, the manufacturing, the engineering is one thing, but getting approval for this vehicle is going to be quite another. Alex, will governments approve it? Will insurers insure it? And how long could that take? Yeah, you know, it's so funny because Apple and Google have long been at war. Apple releases the iPhone. Google releases Android. They go to war with each other. They don't hate each other. Eventually, they come together and they do a distribution deal. Uh, this could be another fortuitous partnership for them because right now, uh, Apple is going to benefit from Google getting way more cars on the road and starting to work through those regulatory hoops them and Tesla and even Uber, you know, are going to lay the groundwork. And this gives Apple a chance to come in and build it on the work that they're doing. And they might be able to swoop in and do this much faster. And they're also going to benefit from the technological advances that these other companies are doing. So the key is, can Apple get the car working? I think once that happens, then the regulatory and the manufacturing leaps that it's going to have to make are going to be less of a hurdle. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see whether Apple can actually pull this off. I think it's a question mark. I don't think they definitively will be able to do it. Uh, it's totally new territory for them. And they've struggled for years to try to get this program off the ground. I think we're seeing some good signs, but I think that's the biggest uh, hoop to jump through is actually making so, the car so, itself. So, Phil, Phil, Alex seems to suggest that some of the groundwork towards regulatory approval and getting insurance yeah. companies to buy in. And regulatory does not just mean federal approval. It would mean by state by state. Correct. Uh, which they all Correct. have their own rules. Uh, that, that some of that is already happening. Is that yeah, a, a and some, big impediment, look, so, in your view? And, Tyler, some states are further along. You look at California, much more comfortable when it comes to autonomous vehicle uh, technology being implemented than if you take a look at other states where they haven't seen autonomous vehicles. So, yeah, there is a state-by-state -state com uh, component of this as well as a federal component. And, and, and Alex is right. Over the next several years, you're going to have to see those regulations uh, advance and improve. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.